Greetings from Lancaster Catholic. Even though it's still July, we're putting the finishing touches on the school reopening plan we've been working on since back in May. This is the third installment of our video series letting you know the details of our reopening plan. Let's start with a review of the basics. First of all, we plan to open on time and in person. Unless the government orders us to close, we will welcome all of our students back for in-person learning on campus every day as scheduled. But it will be anything but business as usual this year. We know that in-person learning is the best way. And we hope all students will take advantage of the fact that we are opening in person for everyone. However, we understand that this pandemic presents a greater risk for some families than others. For this reason, all families will be offered the choice to have their student attend their classes from home. Every one of our classrooms will be equipped to deliver every class every day to students in real time who attend from home. Mr. Clue will be sending you an email laying out the process and asking parents to let us know who will be learning from home so we can be ready to accommodate them. An important part of that policy will be that for purposes of all co-curricular activities and sports teams, attending at home fulfills all the eligibility requirements for our sports teams and clubs just the same as being on campus physically does. So those students learning from home will be just as eligible as any other student for our teams and clubs at Lancaster Catholic. If you remember our first two videos, you know that from the start, the safety of our students, faculty, and staff have been our top priority. Here's a summary of the specific safety policies and procedures we are instituting for the fall. All students, faculty, staff, and visitors to our campus will be required to wear a face covering, either cloth masks, or a face shield as specified in the Pennsylvania Department of Education July 16th guidelines. All students, faculty, staff, and visitors to our campus will have their temperatures checked at the entrance to our building upon arrival every day. Anyone with a temperature above the CDC threshold of 100.4 degrees will be rechecked immediately and will not be admitted if the temperature remains at or above the 100.4 degree threshold. Transparent material barriers will be installed between outdoor entrances where the temperature checks will be performed and the adjacent hallways. Surfaces such as door handles, cafeteria tables, uh, countertops, restroom fixtures, and water fountains will be disinfected with a product that will remain effective in preventing the spread of coronavirus and almost any other bacterial or viral contaminant for up to 90 days at a time. In addition to wearing face coverings, Students will be required to maintain the designated social distancing throughout the school. Teachers will be encouraged to take classes outside for instruction whenever possible, and each academic department will be assigned a specific outdoor space to teach in whenever possible. Cafeteria seating will be marked. Seats will be removed from the long tables to maintain at least a six-foot separation, and all seats will be confined to one side of every table. Numerous hand sanitizing stations will be deployed throughout the school, along with signage reminding everyone to make frequent use of them and the other safety procedures. Transparent heavy-duty dividers are being installed in our science lab tables to provide physical shields as students are standing at the lab stations often have to use safety equipment when doing their science lab work. To limit the total number of people in the building each day, we are instituting what we're calling student privilege to replace senior privilege. That means that any student, regardless of their grade level, who has a first period study hall may come to school late, but must be here in time for the homeroom period. In addition, any student, regardless of grade level, who has a last period study hall may leave early. The exception to this is if a student athlete has an early dismissal for a game or match, they have to remain on campus until the scheduled athletic dismissal. To support this new adjustment to the schedule, homeroom will now be after first period. Students will begin the day, in all cases, in their first period class. Staggered passing and release times will reduce opportunities for groups to congregate unsupervised in places like the hallways. We've established mandatory waiting areas for arriving and departing students with designated social distancing markers clearly indicated. Each of our classrooms will be supplied with disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer which students and teachers can use if they desire. I want to make this clear, our teachers will not be asked or required to clean any surfaces. 
These brief highlights demonstrate our level of commitment to the safety of all and are the most comprehensive we know of among any of our local school districts. We have been paying a lot more attention to the science rather than the politics in our planning. Here's the latest from the most credible scientific experts that informed our decision to reopen in person. We've listened to the science, which says that schools can and should reopen for in-person learning with appropriate risk reduction strategies, while school officials like us also implement aggressive steps to keep community transmission low. We've listened to the American Academy of Pediatrics, which last week published a statement arguing for focusing on science and not politics in supporting a return to in-person schooling. Their statement called for new investments in safety, which we've made, described in-person school as, quote, fundamental to the well-being of the nation's children. Furthermore, they stated, and I quote, prolonged time away from schools has led to months of lost learning and widen gaps in educational achievement, especially for some students of color and those in lower income households. Adding months more to this toll will be an educational disaster that some children may never recover from." End quote. Last Friday, CDC Director Robert Redfield said, and I quote, "...it is critically important for our public health to open schools this fall. School closures have disrupted normal ways of life for children and parents, and they have had negative health consequences on our youth. CDC is prepared to work with K-12 schools to safely reopen while protecting the most vulnerable." End quote. So the harms of school closure are clear. What about the risks of reopening? Multiple studies consistently show that children are not only less likely to become seriously ill from COVID-19, they are also only half as likely to get infected in the first place. Overall, the rate of infection requiring hospitalization among U.S. school-age children up to age 18 since the beginning of the pandemic through July 4th was roughly 1 in 20,000. What about the risk to teachers and staff? Again, we listen to the science. A report led by the former head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention concluded that children appear less likely than adults to transmit COVID-19 to others. Unlike other viruses like the flu, though this evidence is still limited preliminary, studies examining schools with known cases of COVID-19 have shown low transmission rates. For instance, in one case, just two students and no teachers were infected out of 863 close contacts. Other studies show zero confirmed infections, even among teachers and students who sat in the same classroom with a symptomatic child. Perhaps the best summary we've seen is this op-ed piece last week from Benjamin Summers, Joseph Allen, Sarah Blake, and Jessica Cohen, all professors at the Harvard School of Public Health. The statement said, quote, we should be following the science that says in-person schooling for our kids is too valuable to give up and that the risks of school-based transmission appear to be low. We should be investing in adequate testing and tracing resources, making our physical school environments safer, and encouraging a practical balance of social distancing in the classroom with learning and the reality of children's lives." End quote. We're ready at Lancaster Catholic High School. We ordered all of the equipment needed back in May to equip every one of our classrooms with state-of-the-art smart boards, cameras, and classroom microphones so that any student at any time will be able to attend all of their classes remotely, along with their classmates in the classroom in real time every day. We just finished installing the last of the 40 extra smart boards yesterday. The temperature scanners are here and have been used. Our internet bandwidth has been increased by 80% to handle the extra demand. Our fall sports teams have already gathered and will start practice in earnest next week. The PIAA has approved games for fall sports and will live stream as many as we can since fan numbers will be limited. Our marching band has been practicing and the music, drama, and visual arts folks are all gearing up and adapting to the new normal. We'll be having mass and celebrating liturgies and the sacraments. Our campus ministry program is alive as ever and will adapt our student ministry program to whatever the circumstances are. Thank you for your attention and your support of our Ministry of Catholic Education at Lancaster Catholic High School. Please pray for everyone associated with our school community and be assured of our prayers for you and yours always. We'll keep you posted as the dog days of August unfold.
In the meantime, may God bless you, and we'll see you soon.